Welcome back guys. I've got two pieces of material right here that are drops that were bound for the scrap bin at work, by the way. And one of my co-workers actually come up with a use for these things. And what he's wanting to do is pretty much make like a set of parallels that you would bolt to your workbench that overhang outside the table that you could take and set like a shaft and a flange housing down on and you'll know, have uh, have these things cut and right here in the back area drill one or two holes probably for a cap head bolt and then have the table drilled and tapped so that they can they can bolt to the table and then hang out and then you can hang work pieces out over these right here this is a this is just something that had come up whenever he seen that I had actually cut these off of the large piece of flat bar at work. We got some one by eight flat bar. You can see this is hot rolled flat bar. And what I had made was a spanner wrench out of this piece of material. It actually kind of looked like this, eight inches wide right here. And what I had done was drawn out. I needed a large spanner wrench for a cylinder that we were working on. And this was a while ago. I think this was sometime last year. And I had shared a picture on Instagram of holding this wrench that I had cut out. But the other day I pulled that piece of flat bar out because I needed to make a plate for a housing there. So I cut these off. And when my coworker walked by and seen that, he said, hey, man, I could use those things. And so instead of milling them i'm going to use the shaper this is a this is one of those perfect jobs for a shaper because of this flame cut edge right here it's just a it's a great job for the shaper versus trying to set this up in the milling machine and ruining a good end mill or carbide you know either carbide end mills high speed end mills or carbide inserts now if you can get up underneath all this stuff is what you want to do no matter what you're using, try to get underneath all these interruptions. So, but we're gonna, this is just gonna be a fun project for the shaper, and we're gonna go cut them flat. So, we're gonna start with this, uh, this side here, since the, we have the factory mill side right here. We'll set them both down in the vise, and I'll probably stack them in there side by side, and cut them to where they're cleaned up flat. And then once we do, we'll flip them over. And I'll shape this side flat as well so that you have two parallel sides that'll bolt down flat to the work table. All right, and the first thing we're going to do is grind them. You always want to make sure that it, anytime you're going to machine a piece of steel that's been flame cut, go ahead and get your grinder and get all of this scale off of it and try to remove some of the high spots there. But as long as you get your tool underneath all of those interruptions, you, you'll have a lot better chance of not burning up your tool bit. You also want to remove all of the slag there from, from the torch. So chip all that off and then grind it all the way. Got a little bit of a radius on these ends, so I'm going to take the cutoff wheel and lop those off as well. So we'll get them cleaned up and then we'll go to the shaper and start getting them set up. I usually start with the chipping hammer to try to remove most of that slag. Sometimes you can just knock it right on off there or rake it off. Just depends on how bad it's stuck. Looks like I'm going to be grinding most of it. I'm using a 40 grit flap disc right there as a tiger tiger disc. I'm going to go over this again. I just want to try to dress down some of those high spots and eliminate any of the scale that still be in there.
six inch Metapo slicer for this. out of both plates which I've got ground now this spot right here is the only or it's the deepest gouge out of the two should I say so what I want to do is uh, we're gonna fire up the Everlast TIG welder and we're gonna build this up and then dress it down so that I'm not having to chase the depth of these cuts down that far even though I haven't measured it you know we may be taking a lot of that out but I just want to go ahead and fill that up anyway Good job. We ran it at 100, 129 amps right there. Probably run a little hotter. I just need to flip it over and put a little bit more right on that corner. Okay, I got it all set up, ready to go. We just want to, we're going to touch off our tool, our high spots here, but we got quite a bit of low right here. So it looks like we've got quite a bit to come off to get it all flat. So we may just touch off and then we're going to bring the tool down here and I'm going to I'm going to down feed it to kind of see about where we're at. Maybe we can see if we can cut this at once. I do have a cant twist clamp on this end to kind of support this sticking out. And we're running a 25 inch stroke right here. I just about made a total screw up. I noticed that the vise was moving. So I checked my nuts there for the vise and I, they were loose. And I don't remember the last time I used it loosening those things. But they were all loose. So it was trying to, whenever it was hitting, it was actually trying to spin the vise. So I'm starting over. I'm making sure they're all tight now. I thought I was doing good and I had the whole table, everything was tight, all the locking clamps and the outer support and then the vise is loose. I just, I don't recall loosening those. I don't know why that, why it was loose. But anyway, we're gonna start over. Almost cleaning up that second plate. Pretty rough finish down on that end, but we're not worried about that. We'll make a 
once we get it flat, we'll make a nice finishing cut on there. off there hard man that is some gummy stuff maybe my tool geometry isn't isn't the best we'll go back across there with a finished cut try to make it look a lot nicer than that that's a basically a 24 inch cut right there Some real gnarly looking chips right there, man. Look at that. But I think what I'm, I think I'm having problems with my tool grind, and I believe I need more clearance over here on the side where it's doing the cutting. And it did, it got the tool a little bit. It's got some wear on it from cutting through that hard stuff. But that is a benefit of using a piece of tool steel on this machine. You can go over there and regrind it. You're not tearing up carbide. But I'm going to take this one out and I'm going to go to the, my other tool bits and make another cut across there to clean that up good. And then we'll make a, a finishing cut probably with that shear tool. So I reset everything. We got a different tool bit in there. And I've just taken like a 20 thou cleanup cut on that real rough cut that I made. And that one seems to be curling a nicer chip off there. So just more practice for me really, you know, get a little more practice in and a little bit more experience with the tools. So we're going to make that cut there, then I'll probably put my uh, shear tool in there and see if we can get a nice smooth cut across it. So this is my shear tool. I just touched it up again on the grinder and then I rehoned it, trying to get a good shot of that edge right there. The slick area is from the hand honing. And then looking at it that way, that shows like the high helix angle. And I was just verifying my clearance angle, which 
you can do by this. It's got a little square there. But you can see we do have adequate clearance there. And no matter where I go along that edge, it's got clearance. All right, so let's give that a shot again. Got the tool sitting in there the way I want it. Just tried to eyeball the middle of the tool, the middle of the radius. Uh, we got it down real close. So go ahead and touch it off. Check the link here. Looking pretty good. That appears to be leaving a really nice finish this time. what the finish looks like after using the shear tool and it did very nice that is with your fingers that actually uh, feels like a very smooth finish right there so I'm happy with that I would like to improve on that though that's still not where I think it should be I actually made some even prettier cuts when I had the Sheldon shaper and I'm trying to remember what I had done to make such a beautiful finish back then whenever I was playing around but I'm trying to get to that point on the uh, G and E here, but that's a good respectable finish for a shaper and something generally that would have that what this mean what this machine was for back whenever it was used widely. Get something roughed in, and then if you need anything um, any better than that, then you would go to another machine such as a grinder. But that looks pretty good right there. We've got the edges. There it goes, there's one of the edges that just broke off. So I've got some cleaning and deburring to do here. And I want to flip it over and square up the other side too. Okay, we've got the part cleaned, deburred, and flipped over. And we've got a much longer cut now. We've got the machine set at 29 inch stroke. This is 28 inches from end to end. So this is the longest cut that I've done on the machine. And uh, this is the tool that we're going to use right here. I'm going to try this one again. This is just kind of a general tool bit. I've already got it rehoned. So we got a nice sharp cutting edge right there. So we're going to give that a shot. I'll give you the run through the stroke here real quick. That's a long cut, man. That right there is just, that's one of the benefits of having a long stroke shaper is to be able to do a long work piece like that. I can't recall what my travel is on the do-all, but I know it's not 28 inches, I don't think. So just being able to cut one piece from end to end without having to shift it down and move it within the travel. 
So let's get this tool in there and we'll start cutting it. That's a nicer looking cut than that first roughing tool I was using. makes a mess. Just trying to get it all cleaned off. Probably going to make one more pass. My cleaner is helping to break up the oil and allow it to uh, wipe off a lot easier. I think that tool did a really good job even though this a uh, that would still be considered a roughing cut. It's a very smooth and consistent looking roughing cut. I think it looks really good. Uh, the, uh, the bars were a little bit bowed from the torch, so it's not quite cleaning up the ends here and down here. So I'm gonna make one more cut to uh, clean them up just a little bit more. So there's a shot of the, the finish after our second cut right here. And I think it looks really good. It's a really nice finish. So why leave well enough alone? 
<laughs> I think I'd still want to come across there with my shear tool and go ahead and uh, try that again. I'm going to I'm going to go with a little bit more depth of cut this time instead of instead of the five. I might go a little bit deeper and uh, see just because I'm experimenting and uh, playing and just trying to get a little more experience with the shaper here. There's our shear tool one more time. I touched up the tool over on the grinder again and honed it again. Tried to make it a little bit better than I had before. So we'll see how it does. That's the results of our final cut on these bars and you know there's not a lot to complain about sure I wish the I wish I could have got even a better finish than that but this will work I got a feeling that just this this piece of material right here is just giving me a tough time this is super gummy and I mean every cut I've made on it with every tool just doesn't look that good but if I had a better block of steel in here, it would probably make a lot better finish on it than this whole gummy stuff right here. So we still got to clean it, deburr it, and I'm not going to worry about these angles down here on the end. I had thought originally about, you know, turning the vise and, uh, and cutting these, but I just don't want to. I don't want to fool with them, and they're uh, they're they're great for what they're going to be used for, just like that. Well, I've got you back here on the granite plate and curiosity got the best of me and I was really curious as to see how parallel or how flat the uh, these bars are that I shaped in the in the shaper now I already did a preliminary check and I can tell you that they're not parallel uh, they're off a few thousandths so I wanted to see how flat it was so I've got the bar set up on these really uh, precision ground one two three blocks these are the best ones in my shop right here. I've mic'd these and these are within, you know, I'd say one to two tenths of being the same size. These were made by tool makers. So I just use these back here on the, on the granite plate. All right, and I got you set up on my stand there. So you got a constant view of the inner rapid indicator. I've already got it set. So we'll start on this end. And it's real jumpy because that's the the surface finish of the part there. I did have it set near zero on that end. We're just going to kind of call that a zero in that general area. It might have moved a little bit on me, but now that is a tense indicator as well. Let's go ahead and bring it down. I'll try not to jump off of it. So not too bad. It looks like we're looking at, you know, what, a half a thou so far. It's got little low spots here and there. And then we come right back to about where we started on the other end. So let's do that again. So let's call that a half thou over zero as a starting point. So then we drop to about a half thou. So it looks to me like it's, you could call it 1,000, it's easy. 
I think it dropped a little bit more. It depends on where it's at. And I'm trying to keep my, my base nice and steady here. So that gives you a good reference as to uh, the, you know, the machine itself. I showed indicating the table before, and it was showing about a, I can't remember now, was it half a thou or a thousandths? I'd have to go back and look at that, but less than a thousandths anyway. So I'm going to set the other one up there and check it and see how close it is. Okay, we got our second bar up there. Bring it in here and see about where we're starting at. Looks about the same, about a half a half a thousandths over zero. We'll slide her down and see what it does. Yep, I come off. It ain't moving too much. That one looks like it's flatter than the other one. So most of the time that's within a half a thousandth right there. That's pretty cool. Man. Let's go one more time. All right. Well, like I said, that's just a, a fun check that I wanted to do just to see about how flat they were and fun project for the shaper, definitely. All right, guys, that's going to be a wrap on these, these uh, two parallel bars. And I had a I had a good time doing it. Just a fun little project in the shop. A great way to uh, make use of some would-be scrap material. And I had a good time running the shaper again and practicing my cuts and tool geometries and just getting a little more machine time over here. That's really what this was about. And it was fun making this 28-inch cut. You know, just you know, getting with it a few inches of the limit of travel on the shaper right there. It's pretty cool. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed too. And uh, thanks for coming in and uh, hanging out with me while I'm doing some work out here. And we'll bring you back again real soon. All right. See you guys next time.